Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. Nitesh here. So I am going to start the uh, Lightning Talks with uh, uh, Trading Docs setting up a new output format. So uh, I think you guys are aware of the Trading Docs on, the, on our previous sessions by Navi and few other guys. So uh, there is a, a content manager where we store the content uh, to maintain the documentations and all. So uh, I think let me start so so here uh, uh, myself nitesh so i am working with uh, rws and former sdl from last three years worked on uh, various uh, implementation projects for trading sites and trading docs for different customers on premise and on cloud so, so we have done like uh, number of customizations number of implementation based on the customer requirements on trident sites on and on trident dogs so yep uh, let's start so this is so on this lightning talks so what we are going to learn that is one thing like uh, we are creating the output format style process on our trident dogs we will creating a uh, data out the html output so uh, like uh, uh, when we are going to customize that Trident Docs output, we need to have a different output format where we are going to publish. So um, that I will go and show in. I will going to show in the demo. So uh, before that, I will just uh, show you the basic architecture of Trident Docs. So uh, here is a architecture. You can find this in our documentations as well. So this is our uh, uh, typical structure of the content manager. So where we have a core API services, uh, CM plugins, custom, custom plugins, and background tasks. So uh, like we are going to customize the publishing. So we will going to do some changes on the publish plugin. Uh, those are part of uh, uh, data OT as well. So this is the publishing process uh, as you can see uh, there are different type of publishing we can do from the trident docs on the content delivery with the trident dx so you can publish the content to the uh, unified delivery platform uh, which is also integrated with trident sites so you can get the content from trident sites and docs as well on the content delivery so here also from the docs also we can publish to the content delivery and then uh, there is a publishing to different outputs like pdf xpp and html html5 output html or uh, other html outputs xml xhtml so yeah uh, we are going to uh, present that so i am i don't want to waste much time on presentation let's go into demo uh, let me share So, as you can see, my window here is a trident docs. Here is a publication. So, who, who are not aware of the trident docs publishing? So, on the trident docs, we can only publish content uh, from the publication only. We cannot publish map or lab topics and all. So, uh, here is already one published target is added so let's get to the different publication so as you can see there are different html uh, format and, and if let's publish into the existing one first and see what is the output. So when we publish it, and we it will take some time. Uh, so let's go into the background. It is already published. So what I can do, I can just show you the output here. Uh, oh, oh, let's uh, download the output. So. Yeah. 
So this output is already published. So let me So if I go here, I will just extract this. So in this output, we see the output is showing like this. We have a map, we have, we have a table of content. On the table of content, we have different topics. And on different topics, if we go, uh, we can go to the different topics as well. So uh, let me, we want to, we want to, we want to, uh, Customize, customize this uh, output. So let's uh, do the cust to customize the output. We need to have the different out output format. So to have the different output format, uh, we need to go to the settings, settings and output format. And uh, so uh, we have, uh, we can create a new new output format and then the new output format we have uh, i have already added this output format so i am going to create a output format with dxs html5 and then uh, different uh, resolution i will go to set and the processor we are going to add in, under this uh, style processor is this so how do we add this HTML for uh, transformation type into this dropdown and the processor? We uh, will go into this uh, uh, info share web author ESP and then uh, config client config and we have the metadata config xml where we are going to where we are going to edit this so as you can see um, to add the processor, we have to have this uh, 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 our condition added into this uh, processor field, and then on, on a stretch processor field, uh, uh, there is a processor we are going to add data ot slash dxs in here. Uh, I have created one for demo, so how, how it will look, I will show, and also for the drop down on the dxs html. Uh, we need to update that uh, transformation type under this field, data out transaction type field, so that uh, transformation type will be added into the drop down. So, what I was showing into this uh, field, uh, we have the we have the transformation type txs hyphen html5, and then we have a style processor txs. We can just like uh, go and click OK. This is the setting up of uh, output format into this uh, window. So after that, we can get uh, those output format here. So once, uh, like if we click on the new output format, here we are getting the option of the um, new HTML called txs-html5.
So as you can see, uh, this PSS HTML5 is in the drop down now. So I have added that into this publication. Uh, before publishing the content into the output format, we have to go again into the settings. We have to go to the publish plugin. This is the XML publish plugin where we need to go and we need to add. Uh, machine is a little slow. So here, if you can see, uh, I have the HTML file already there. So in this uh, transformation type uh, condition, I have to add one more field called the TXS hyphen HTML5. So that is one we have to add and then uh, we have to like uh, save this, save this and we have to we have to restart the background process, price of background process. And uh, then we can publish the content into this output format. But uh, this is the half part on the content the manager side. We have to add the con our customization into into data into OT as well. So what we need to do, we need to go to info share. We need to go to app. We need to go to utilities. And uh, we have a data OT because we are going to customize the data OT in here. So. Uh, the processor which I was showing into the metadata config px yep uh, the processor which I was going to uh, I was showing into the metadata config the data OT hyphen txs twenty one India so that this uh, information is like uh, populating from this location so whatever processor we are going to add, add we are going to customize the changes so it is like a recommended one don't touch the uh, out of the box uh, data ot came with a product prepare a new new processor and do the customization so uh, we are going to do the changes so uh, what we need to do we need to copy this we need to like copy this, we need to create one more info share folder and then we need to rename it uh, like uh, txs21 hyphen india so that we need to populate it. So, this is the way we can create a processor. And under that processor, how do, did I customize it? Because I want to add the data OT plugin. So, what I need to do, I need to go to the plugins and under plugins, uh, I need to add. Uh, my custom custom plugin. So I have added the custom plugin with the name org.rws. Uh, under this, uh, we will going to add the configuration of the plugin. So this plugin will be uh, extension of HTML5 existing one and uh, our plugin will be txs hyphen html5 where we are going to publish later and this uh, plugin will going to use some features mentioned into the integrator xml so if i go to the integrator xml if i go to the integrator xml here uh, here we are going to define what will be the initialization type what will be the different uh, CSS we are going to use into this plugin, what will be different images into the plugin we are going to use and the XSL files we are going to use. So those are defined into integrator Excel, Excel XML. Based on that, it will go to these folders, pick those and generate the uh, transformation and publish the content into that output. So as we have seen, uh, we are going to add that uh, lenser evo 
application into we are going to create a new output format with the txs html file for this publication so we have we are going to add this Uh, let me pick other publication which this is taking a little bit time so i have already added the content into the publication earlier so let's go there So here is our publication. So what I'll do, I'll I'll just download this because I have already published this publication with this output for me and I have already downloaded this as well. As you can see the output has the TXS hyphen HTML5 and I am going to so previous one if you see this is like a basic html one so here there was no styling and all so this is kind of a requirement for a specific customer that they want to get the output with the, some predefined html so like they can use this into the this html into the their actual application and they can get the content as well for their uh, HTML wireframes as well. So you can directly generate the HTML wireframe uh, by customizing all these outputs of the publication. So if you this is the index.html, if you both going to if you want to see the topics, you can click on topics, you can see the customization of the topic as well. You can go to the subtopics as well. Through that you can have the subtopics there. So this is because of some CSS thing it is going right. So we can go to current topic. So everything is same, only the stylings and the logo is added as part of the customizing of the HTML5 output. So uh, uh, this is uh, basically uh, customizing of uh, output. So yep, uh, that's I think most of the publishing customization part if you have anything to ask please let me know also one more thing i just want to highlight here like this is also you can you can refer there is a blog already written i have already written the blog you can also refer the blog onto the community.sdl.com 
So you can just uh, find out this blog with the name of cust customize output when we need to publish the publication from Indian Docs. So this will be like you can refer this to to the customization. So all, and most of the things like are explained in detail in this blog. Yep, yeah, uh, that's it from my side. Uh, okay, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for our presentation related to Visual Studio plugin for 3 d add-ons. Uh, me and Richard Cohen and Richard Trophy will present it uh, to you. And let us quickly introduce ourselves. So, Andre, over to you. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Andre Shatrov. I am a software developer for a 3 d sites team. And I am Andrzej Jutko, I am product owner, uh, responsible also for content manager part of 3D on sites. So today in our agenda, we will quickly touch uh, the service feature, uh, the way how you, you should package your extensions uh, to be uh, the add-on compatible, and the main part, Visual Studio plugin that should help you to develop and package your extensions. So let's start with add-on service feature. So then service was introduced uh, in sites uh, 9.1 release. Uh, it introduces new centralized way of managing your extensions. And uh, yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time speaking uh, on this topic. That is why I recommended you to look at uh, uh, available webinars and other presentations related to add-on service feature and links are available on the slide. Uh, this is the full list of supported extension points for 3D on sites product. Mm, Add-on service supports all of them. However, we would like to focus today on that part that is related to content manager side because it's the least visual plugin uh, was built for. Uh, so let's talk a bit about add-on packaging and uh, uh, one of the benefits for the add-on feature is the possibility to combine multiple uh, extensions that should be deployed together as a single solution. As an example, you can combine an event handler that uh, expose custom data uh, for the list and UI extensions that display this data. Uh, this, this is an example of a manifest file that describes uh, add-on package. And uh, why I'm uh, trying, what I'm trying to say by showing it is that it might take uh, some time for you to fill in all required properties uh, for it uh, when you're doing the first time. And uh, it's the uh, right time to raise a problematic statement that add-on service feature solves deployment problem, but it doesn't make developers' life easier. Uh, and uh, Visual, but now let's cover Visual Studio plugins that actually should address mentioned statement. Uh, so Visual Studio plugin uh, feature uh, has following uh, capabilities. So it has uh, templates for content manager public extension points like event handler, uh, UI editor, and resolver. It gives you possibility to prefill uh, don't package manifest properties, and uh, as well as uh, you can use post build action to combine multiple uh, projects into a single add-on package. And uh, actual demo. So, Andre, over to you to do the, the demo. Thank you, Andre. Let me share my desktop. So, Andre, do you see my desktop? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the main uh, our uh, GitHub repository to create uh, 3D on add-on templates. It was initially created by Vladislav Antoninka. And uh, let me show what is inside of this solution. For now, we have several uh, extension you see it's UI extension, resolver extension, and an event system extension that could can, can be easily created with this template. So we have a release here. You have to download it. 
it is a Visual Studio extension. Let me install it. And now we will try to create a don with two uh, separate extension inside. We have a template here. Yeah, here is it. So we will have a solution with all necessary stuff. And let's try to add a new project for event system extension. The main idea is to show how easily we can create a simple extension and how easily it can be added to the system. So let's check the code. In this code, we just add a, a sample extension suffix in the title. And uh, we have to change manifest to go to the correct version, but uh, just try to build it and see how it works. Here we see add-on service. And now uh, let's put it into a demo. And uh, I will try to upload it. Yes, we have a scene status pending activation here. But if you want to go on here, we see tight uh, CM event handler here. Let's try to see if it works or not. Let's create a simple schema. Yes, we see that in title we have additional ex extension suffix. So it's, it works and then we go here we will see that status is success. Uh, if we will have any errors, we will get this in the event uh, viewer and we can fix it. So let me go back and create a set next extension. This, this type, it will be resolver. Yes, so let's put additional code here. I will describe this code a little bit. So if we will open our environment, we will see a component that is connected to the first component as a link. And in source, we will see here in uh, special attribute as a link. So we will try to get it here. Here is we got this attribute. Here we sure that it's a component and then we get an item uh, for this URI, TCM URI. Then we will load the full item, all the properties, and then we will add it to the list of resolved items. Okay, let's uh, actually we have to for example, here we have to change to correct manifest. After can be, for example, like that. So here we will put a component type. This type will be served. And here we have to put the correct type for uh, our extension. Full class name. Yes, that's okay. Let's try to build it. 
and try how it works. In our case, without this extension, if we will try to publish the second component, uh, the one component will be resolved only. Uh, let me show it. Yes, and now we will add our extension here. Yes, we see the status pending activation. It will be changed after the first invoking of this extension. So let's check now. Yes, you see that now we have two components as was expected. It is very good. And now we will try to all add all this extension to our main package. In this case, we have to add project reference for both our extensions and to change manifest file. For example, let me put out. And let's try to change, for example, suffix. Let's remove our two extensions here. And let's try to add our package. If we go inside it, we see two extensions is inside with type CM and handler and with type CM resolver. So let's try to create a new simple schema. Yes, we see that we have suffix two, a new version of our suffix here. And let's try to publish the same component to see, will it have two components? Yes, it have, has two components here, so it works. So now you see how easily we can create an extension and add-on that contains several extensions inside. That's all I want to show you. Thank you, Andri. Thank you, Andri. Let me grab screen sharing. Okay. Uh, great demo. Thank you once more. Uh, so, uh, by following that link that is uh, mentioned in the slide, you can get the plugin. It's a personal contribution that can be used by Tridion community. It's not owned by AWS. Uh, as a next step, we would like to add uh, more templates for other public extension points. Additionally, as a post build action, we would like to automate the publishing of the packages to a local event service. So your contribution actually matters and uh, feel free to get it and commit your code. Um, uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> it will be available online to uh, answer on your questions in the live chat event. 
I hope you enjoyed our session as well as the event itself. Thank you.